Heidi Ho, neighbor. Welcome back to Diary of an Airstream. Today we are working on the last big project that we have left, which is building the shower. The majority of the structure of the shower was already in place from when we framed out the bathroom, but we still had to find a solution to deal with the portion of the wheel well that pokes into the shower and to create an opportunity to bring up the plumbing and wiring that runs underneath the shower and needed to enter into the cabinetry. Jared designed this seat to go in the corner to minimize the amount of space that we lost and it turned out looking kind of like home plate and baseball. Now that the seat is built, we took some cardboard and made a template of the floor and then we traced it onto the weedy board shower pan and now we're about to cut it out. Okay, so we just cut the shower pan. If we got it wrong, it cost a thousand dollars to get a new one, so here we go. Remember, if it's too big, we can fix that. It's got to be too big. Ooh, hadn't thought of that. Might have to cut. Take three. Had to trim off a couple times. Take I don't know five or six. We had to shave off bits here and there. Once we had the shower pan correctly shaped, it was time to mix up our first set of thin set to adhere it to the subfloor. Now is probably a good time to mention that we've never built a shower before, and while we did follow a lot of instructions and tutorials, I would not recommend this as a tutorial, more of a record of how we did it and the mistakes we made along the way, which I will definitely be sharing. There's one coming up soon. Heidi ho, neighbor. This is the weedy shower system. This is what we're going to be installing in the Airstream here momentarily. Now what's cool about the weedy shower system is we can take any space that we have and we can build a shower in there, a custom shower. So we already have a shower pan that we've cut and set in place. This is the walls. Uh, they're basically a foam board, waterproof all the way through. Small puncture through here is not gonna be a problem. Caulk over it with the weedy caulk and everything should be fine. These will screw into the studs that are in the shower as we've already framed it out. Everything will caulk together and it should be 100% waterproof before we start tiling. I cannot emphasize enough that this is not a tutorial, but what you see us doing here is screwing the weedy boards into place using the fasteners and then sealing all of the joints with the weedy sealant. The sealant is kind of like caulk if caulk was meant to never leave your skin for the rest of your life. Once all of the weedy boards were in place and the sealant was dry, the shower was entirely waterproof. So everything from this point forward is just decorative. And we did do a flood test of the shower pan, which it passed with flying colors. We moved on to the pretty part, the tile, which this is one place where I have a few regrets. I decided to use thin set, which is a more traditional method that you would use in a house, but it's a little bit unnecessary with the weedy shower system. One of the reasons to use thin set is so that you can build up the slope towards the drain, which is unnecessary because the weedy shower pan is pre-sloped. So I could have just used the construction adhesive that I will use on the wall tiles. Live and learn. Because I used the thin set, I had to do a lot more cleanup, which was why this video cut off abruptly, but I did achieve the same result. It was just a little messier in the process. Once the floor tile was in place, we moved onto the wall tile. This was another place that gave me a lot of anxiety, many nightmares about tiles falling off the wall while the airstream was in transit. 
So instead of using traditional tiles, which would have been far too heavy, we decided to use these PVC tiles. Now these were intended to be used with the self-adhesive that is on the back of each one, but that didn't seem quite strong enough. So for each tile, I had to peel off the liner on the back of the tile and then add construction adhesive and then place each tile. I also had to cut the tiles because of course these were very tight spaces and make sure that the spacing was correct for the grout which is why this took several weeks. Uh, the part you see here where we're on the vertical walls was not too difficult, but soon we entered the curve. To keep the rest of the bathroom from being entirely soaked every time the shower was in use, we also decided to add a plexiglass wall to fill in the gap between the vanity and the ceiling. Apologies for the portrait video of this next step, somehow I managed to not capture a landscape version. As you can see, before we installed the plexiglass wall, we went back and grouted all of the tile. I, of course, started with the hardest part directly over my head, thinking that the grout would fall naturally and then I could clean up the grout on the floor after the fact. What did not occur to me was that the grout would fall not only on the floor, but also on my face and in my hair and in my eyes. Fortunately, Jared caught onto that really quickly and brought me the appropriate equipment. Once we finished the grout, we installed the plexiglass using fasteners to attach it to the butcher block countertop and to the ceiling. We then went back and caulked all of those seams to ensure a waterproof seal. We then went back and added trim around the edges to finish it out. Of course, I didn't film any of that. But before I give you the grand reveal, let me show you one last step in the bathroom, which is Jared installing our composting toilet, a task that was much simpler than if we had been installing a toilet attached to a black tank. Essentially, we just had to screw it into the floor and add a vent fan that connected to the outside so that oxygen could get in to help with the composting process. I'm sorry this video took so long to come out, but in reward for your patience, we have been working on a lot of the finishing touches, which will hopefully be coming out in a video soon.